Understanding that the law of Moses is obsolete instantly clears up so much confusion. For example, there is a cult called the Seventh-day Adventists who have made a whole faith system centered around the idea of keeping the Saturday Sabbath, which is the fourth of the Ten Commandments. Their false prophetess Ellen G. White believed that keeping the Saturday Sabbath was necessary for salvation, saying, I saw that the Holy Sabbath is and will be a separating wall between the true Israel of God and unbelievers. Even those outside of the SDAs can surprisingly make a big deal out of keeping the Saturday Sabbath. But if you are relying on the day you worship to make yourself right with God, then you better make sure you are keeping the other 612 laws perfectly too. Otherwise you are no better off than someone who keeps none of the laws. You are in fact putting yourself under the old law of Moses with its curse of death and treating Jesus' cross as meaningless. Jesus can't help you if you are still relying on your own effort. Really, the Sabbath issue is so heavily debated that it needs a whole other series to explain fully. But for now, I will simply reiterate that Jesus has fulfilled the old law and we now rest in him and his finished work. The Sabbath is no longer a day, but a person. Jesus is our Sabbath rest. The Old Testament laws were just a foreshadowing of something more full and complete in Christ. A useful starting point for understanding this concept is Hebrews 4. The abolition of the old law of Moses also answers the mockers and atheists who like to quote verses from the Old Testament, such as the one that bans the weaving of two types of material together, or the one that instructs people not to eat shellfish. They claim Christians are hypocrites for not following the strict dietary and clothing rules of the law of Moses, and that we quote selectively from the Bible. But in their ignorance they haven't understood that the law of Moses was made obsolete and Christians are not bound by any of it. We are completely free to eat what we want and wear what we want within the boundaries of decency. Now that's not to say that the Old Testament laws don't still contain some good principles. You still might want to think about cutting pork and shellfish out of your diet, but there is no law against it. I heard Stephen Fry recently say that the Bible was confused because it told people to turn the other cheek and forgive enemies on the one hand, but also told them to take an eye for an eye. Of course, the eye for an eye instruction belonged to the civil part of the old law of Moses, which governed Israel in Old Testament times, and it has been made obsolete. There is no conflict. So what am I saying then? That there's no such thing as morality for Christians now? That we can do whatever we want? If the law of Moses is gone, are we just going to live under lawlessness? Can we lie, steal and murder now? That's often the first reaction of those who hear this information for the first time. And the answer is no, we cannot just do what we want now. Remember our chart. The temporary law of Moses was built on top of and was merely a written expression of something much deeper. It was an expression of the eternal moral law of God. You see, it was wrong to murder before we had the law of Moses and it's wrong now it's been abolished. It was wrong to steal before the law of Moses and it's still wrong now it's been abolished. Remember how I said that it would be wrong to murder in Britain even if the British civil law disappeared? It's the same thing. Think of Cain and Abel. Cain murdered Abel at the beginning of Genesis, well before the law of Moses had been given, but God still punished Cain because the eternal moral law was always in effect. Paul writes, Yes, people sinned even before the law of Moses was given, and though there was no law to break since it had not yet been given, they all died anyway. Lying and stealing and murdering are not wrong because the law of Moses says they're wrong, they were always wrong and they still are today. If it was wrong to murder before the law of Moses, why would we think it's okay to murder after the law of Moses? God's moral law never changes and is completely unaffected by the ending of the law of Moses, which was merely a temporary system to govern the life of Israel before the coming of the Christ. Furthermore, remember what Hebrews said, he cancels the first covenant in order to establish the second. The end of the Old Covenant doesn't mean that there's no covenant at all, it just means it has been replaced with a better one. We live under a new dispensation of time and a new law. This is called the Law of Christ, the Royal Law or the Spirit Life. We'll explore what it looks like next.